But the biggest reason, and this, I could even possibly forgive them for not having a very angle screen, is their 4K. Yeah, I said that. Ooh. Welcome everyone, Magnus here. And if you're new to my channel, I talk about cameras, new cameras, camera rumors, tips and tricks about cameras. And of course I test a few cameras out. Soon to be testing the R5, which you can definitely look for that in a future video. But today we're talking about the A7S III that was just announced. And basically, <laughs> pretty much shut me up. Now, a while ago, I, I think about a week ago, I made a video talking about why Sony never won me over and their lack of a flip screen from higher bit rates to a bunch of other stuff. And it's almost like the A7S III, which is playing in a video right behind me, pretty much answered everything. 4K up to 120p with autofocus and sound enabled. You've got 4K up to 60 frames per second raw recording via HDMI out. You've got a couple of internal codecs that can record pretty much all the 4K levels up to 120 to an SD card or to a CFast Express Type A card using the same slots. So that's pretty innovative and definitely next level thinking. You've got improved menus. You've got, I mean, I'm sure you've seen a ton of these videos online already with a bunch of other creators talking about it. Now, one thing I want to mention to you, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, but, and I hope that you know this, any creator that has already said, okay, we've got the camera, we're testing the camera, or we're reviewing the camera, know that they've had the camera for a while, and even Sony would require or limit them to say certain things. So pay attention to that. If Sony sent them a camera, they probably have rules to follow. Usually you can rely on reviews after a camera's released more thoroughly to really go after the negatives. But everything I've seen so far is positive. But positive enough to the fact that it's almost tempting to pick up instead of the R5, right? It's almost like I'm tempted to just cancel my order for the R5, which I'm so close to getting, and just switch to the A7S III. But I'm not going to do that, and I'll tell you why. In particular, the A7S III, I mean, if I didn't already have an R5 pre-order in, and the R5 wasn't announced, we're still working with the Canon EOS R, for example, or they decided to release the R5 at, at an obscene price, like six thousand seven thousand dollars then i would definitely consider the sony i would probably put my pre-order in for the sony however that's not going to happen in this case one of the reasons is because as amazing as the sony cameras sound again we don't know everything about them we know a lot obviously the specs are out and at least those preliminary tests seem pretty good like doesn't overheat at all either which is nice but there's still not enough info out there, I think. Just even, even like the R5. R5, there's a lot of information out there. But even then, what don't we know? But I've already made my decision on the R5, and I'm going to stick to it. And I'm not going to tell you what you should do. Look at the specs, look at what people have been saying, and then make your own if you're in line for a camera. Make your own judgment. I would almost say wait until actual reviews after camera release are out, just in case you're going to see a couple of things that you didn't know about, especially on the Sony, since it's not releasing until late September. But one of the reasons why I'm not canceling the R5 is it's more of a true hybrid camera than the Sony is. Now, the Sony, I've seen a couple of videos out there that the A7S III, even at 12 megapixels, takes amazing photos. And then when you're looking, especially if you're posting to like Instagram or Facebook, and that's what you want to use the camera for or some specific websites. 12 megapixels should be enough, right? And in, and in a lot of cases, 12 megapixels is enough, especially with the performance of that camera, which is full frame, because we're all used to using our cell phones, which predominantly shoot in 12 megapixels. Of course, there are some higher megapixels cameras out there, but 12 megapixels in itself, almost everybody on Instagram posts that megapixel detail. Of course, limiting you when it comes to cropping in, but 
at the same time, you still have plenty of camera. However, for my work in particular, I have clients that actually desire that I come in and just do photos only. They see me with a camera and holding a big, predominantly huge camera, and they're like, hey, you know, you got a camera, you, you take pictures, right? Take pictures for me. And I'm like, I'm a video guy, but I decide to give a, give it a try, give taking pictures a try, and why not? That earns me extra revenue. I get better, and I'm trying to improve my photo game anyway, so why not? So because I've got potential clients coming forward wanting me to have the ability to take photos for them, I want the latest camera that also does great video. And that's what you have with the Canon. It's a good, it's a true real hybrid camera. Another reason is that the Canon R5 and the R6, mostly the R5, I believe in this speculated update, is that there's going to be a firmware download for the Canon. I said that kind of funny, didn't I? There's going to be a firmware download for the Canon R5 that is allegedly, and I can't confirm this, but allegedly going to allow for raw recording in more modes, as well as a better compression in more modes. So it's gonna be not as large bit rates because quite honestly on the R5, the bit rates are pretty large. So they'll tone down the bit rates and allow for more flexibility on slower cards and taking up less data on your actual cards themselves so that you can like transfer the footage to computer a lot quicker and make it easier on a space saving perspective so that you can get more footage out of what you have. But if they do have the ability to implement RAW to more resolutions, for example, 4K, it would definitely have to be cropped in because it's taking really the raw information off the sensor. So it'll probably crop in on the 4K to <laughs> an obscene amount. But at least you can have RAW recording at different resolutions. And that in itself is a plus. And you don't have to have such large files recording in full 8K, but you have the ability to do that if you want. And if they offer a better compression of RAW in 8K, that to me is exciting and game changing. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and 6K use Blackmagic RAW. And the 4K itself, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, yeah, it's like I have to say the whole name. That camera used to use Cinema DNG RAW. And that was unbearably large. You needed the fastest cards or to connect your SSD drive directly to the USB-C port of the camera in order to use those type of files. Now they had compression for Cinema DNG RAW, but at the same time, it was still unbelievably large and inconvenient and horrible to edit with. So using Canon RAW Lite, you're still getting incredibly large files and it's still unbelievably inconvenient to edit with. However, if you have a more efficient type of raw codec that could potentially work with your computer to maybe make it easier to edit, although that's no guarantee, Blackmagic specifically made it a lot easier and put half of the weight on the camera. I don't think that Canon will do that, but at least to have lighter raw files would be huge and game changing and then say, hey, Sony, you have to buy another attachment, which is another over $500 to record RAW, while on the R5, you actually get to record internally. And to me, recording RAW internally is just a lot more convenient. With the flip screen, able to record RAW internally, I get, it's just convenient all around. And I believe that Canon's listening when it comes to the overheating. And I believe that even though you really can't escape overheating issues, perhaps there's a better software way of handling overheating or maybe allowing a little bit more of a higher temperature in the camera, although that's risky, but maybe extending that time just a bit more or the processing, the way it does the internal processing of these video files to actually not overheat the camera as much. Something like that is possible with the right type of firmware update. I mean, Canon's got to answer somehow. They don't always answer, but Canon should pay attention because if Sony's trying to steal a lot of this thunder, then they could respond. And like I said, there's a rumor that they're already responding with better compression for the RAW and 8K and 4K and whatnot. 
So that's exciting to listen to. So knowing that that is on the horizon, as well as the fact that this camera can actually take high resolution pictures is what keeps me wanting to stick with the R5. And the final reason that seems to be a pattern with Canon. Now, Canon has always, at least for the past few years, even ever since the 5D Mark IV, they put out cameras that have been subpar from a spec perspective. So we're talking the 6D Mark II, we're talking EOS R, even the EOS RP. Those specs have been less than impressive that they've released with those cameras, even my 5D Mark IV, if I didn't say that before. But over time and after usage, they have been absolutely loved and cherished by the video making community because even though they've been somewhat limited when it comes to specs, they just worked. Now, I know it sounds like it's opposite right here because the Sony's seem to be working and almost completely obliterated overheating issues while the Canons are just setting their cameras on fire or something with, with the amount of overheating issues that we're hearing about early on. But I guarantee you, like always happens, give it a year and we'll see how many people are hanging on to the EOS R5 or R6 and saying, this camera is exactly what I want and it does all of this. And also one thing that you can't take for granted is that the 8K is actually more detailed than the highest quality 4K. And the high quality 4K in the Canon is on par, if not a tad better than Sony's 4K, which is pretty cool. But again, Sony's got the ability to do HD at 240 frames per second. And it sounds pretty cool for the most part. So I got a Definitely give it up to Sony for finally making a camera that's even caught my interest. So would I recommend one over the other? Again, I don't know. That's up to you and what your needs are. But because my needs are photo related and video related, and I want to have a camera that pretty much at least most things pretty well, I'm still sticking with the R5. But would you? Have you been interested in the R5 and now you're switching to Sony? Or are you thinking that you were a Sony user going to R5 and definitely not going back to Sony, even though they've improved so many things like color science, like a lot of things. Sony knocked it out of the park. I, I, I can't believe that they actually make me want to consider buying their camera. Still, they came close. I still want to try to test it out, but on my channel, I don't test out any cameras or I haven't been able to that I can't either purchase or actually get from loan because quite honestly, I'm not sponsored by anyone. I'm not paid to do these reviews by anyone. It's just me doing it and a little bit of money I get from YouTube because I've got over a thousand subscribers and I post affiliate links down below. I'll post pre-order for the new Sony camera, the R5, what I used in this video, because those links, though they don't cost you anything, they actually give me a kickback when you purchase either those links or anything else on Amazon, at least after you click on my link. So that is definitely appreciated at all times. And of course, if you subscribe, that means the world to me. It helps grow our channel and maybe one day I'll be big enough to actually have camera companies send me something to test, right? But until then, it's not necessary. I'm going to keep going without it and keep you guys updated. As always, if you like this video, definitely hit the like, share, and you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later.